All right, Shalom Israel. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim Al Shai, the Bwana to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to Lek out there doing this work of faith and labor of love, truth, sincerity. All right, you know, uh, pretty much I want to get into uh, uh, the second installment of, uh, there we go, it's a little better, of uh, Christianity uh, for Dummies 101. You know, the topic I pretty much wanted to get into is, um, the fact that you know uh christians believe that man has authority over the bible you know and this is and clear according to some documentation you know a verification i want to bring out uh, uh for brothers and for those that are amongst you know those different uh community networks of uh christianity you know uh whichever part you're in uh catholicism you know uh methodist baptist whatever uh, sect of Christianity that you're in, you have to know that what you're actually serving and what you actually conform yourself to are the ways of man. And according to your doctrine, man believes that he has authority over the Bible, over the words of the Lord himself. Now, common sense would say to us, the Lord created us what right do we have to alter the Lord's word? Well, this is what your doctrine has inherited. This is what your doctrine has passed on down the line. And we're going to get into that, you know. But first off, I want to get into this. Uh, a couple of scriptures before I get into the documentation. Um, this is the book of Isaiah 55, and I start at verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord... And he will have mercy upon him and to our power, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay? So it's clear, clear cut. You know, our ways in no way, shape, form, or fashion could ever reach, reach the ways of the Most High. You know, another thought just hit me in the spirit. I'm Lord willing, I might do a separate segment just on that alone, you know, because you can look at it through all facets of life. What does Esau try to do to be like the Mosai? You know, they try to create clones. They're trying to create artificial intelligence. They're trying to create new life. You know, they mix breed animals, you know, trying to be the creator himself, you know. And that's all in their thought patterns, according to the pride level that the most high have instilled into them, you know, to be the wicked, to be the destroyer of this earth as we know it. You know, look at the food. But all Esau creates is starch foods when all the Lord creates is alkaline based foods. That help to support the body, support the digestive system, support the cells, feed the cells. But everything that Esau creates within his laboratories, you know, isn't of a, a natural uh, uh chemical estate from the earth it's artificial therefore it's detrimental in harming the body man you know but uh real quick i don't want to get off topic all right but um i just want to grab uh another scripture um real quick another basic basic scripture <clears throat> and this is the book of uh acts 5 Book of Acts 5, <clears throat> verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Mosiah rather than men. So that's clear cut. We ought to obey the Mosiah, Yahweh Bashim Shah, rather than men. But as I said, you know, getting into this documentation, you're going to clearly see that amongst, uh, you know, different groups of Christians, they choose, okay, they choose man's ways over the lord's ways you know so first off i want to get into because you know uh we got to understand you know uh well one key thing that i want to get into was about you know pretty much uh the sabbath and the switching of the sabbath all right now we know according to the true doctrine of yahweh bashmi Shah, that what the days go according to the moon not according to the sun you know as is in modern times because that goes into sun worship 
you know, and the authority of Sabbaths being switched was done by uh, Constantine, which was an Israelite during the Dark Age period, starting pretty much uh, starting the rule of Jake during the Dark Ages. You had other key factors and other key players before then, you know, but he really took it to another level, you know. And I just wanted to read quick points uh, from this book. And matter of fact, I was just watching some of, um, I didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing, but I was watching some of Elder Ayatun's video and, uh, the, you know, the, the thumbnail and everything. And even in the video, he has it up like the Tombstone uh, R.I.P. or Rip Christianity from 325 A.D., I believe, to the present. And that 325 A.D. represents what? The time of Constantine and the council uh, the first council of Nice or Nicaea, however um, that's pronounced, you know, forgive me for that. So you can see from this book here, the history of the first council of Nicaea, a world's Christian convention, A.D. 325, with the life of Constantine. Okay, so this correlates uh, with the Elder Ayatun's video. Once again, I didn't, you know, uh, watch the whole thing. I just watched some of the beginning. But how he said, how he had that date up there, 325, eight, rip. R.I.P. Christianity 325 A.D. to the present. So this is was the initiation of it, uh, you know, Christianity, uh, so to speak, in its totality. All right. And um, the switching of, of, you know, the Most High's laws. OK, so. And um, I want to get into uh, what's this part I want to get into. Lock your bed with me one second. One second. Um, yeah, I don't want to get. I'm gonna just get straight to the point. I just want to get straight to the point because this is about the Sabbath, pretty much. You know, so uh, this is uh, page uh, 15 in this book, and it says, "In our present, uh, matter of fact, I start up a little bit. Constantine had his likeness represented on golden coins with the eyes uplifted." In the attitude of prayer and we could clearly see the likeness of Constantine's image you know when we look up on Google we see some of the old coins and we see from you know the features on the coin uh, uh, that he was a Jake also other documentation as well but that's just one thing to show forth that you know he's a Jake when you look at those actual coins it doesn't look like a so-called white man on those coins okay and our present legal institution of Sunday was established by this man's authority, okay? So what you so-called uh, uh, Christians in Christianity uh, celebrate today was Constantine switching the Mosai Sabbath, switching to the observance of Sunday in essence of sun worship, okay? Because Constantine was a sun worshiper, all right? He wasn't a righteous man, all right? So it says, in our present legal institution of Sunday, was established by this man's authority. He enjoined on all the subjects of the Roman Empire to observe the Lord's day as a day of rest. This decree for the general observance of Sunday appears to have been issued A.D. 321, before which time both the old and new Sabbaths were observed by Christians. Gibbon says he called the Lord's day Dies Solis, that is, the day of the sun. Or son's day. This day, he said, should be regarded as a special occasion uh, for prayer. And he gave his soldiers the following form of prayer to use. And it, you know, just gets into that uh, pretty much. I believe that was just the main point that I want to get into. But now you have to understand, you know, during this time, uh, Constantine, he was getting rid of a lot of, uh, you know, people that was um, into idolatry. But at the same time, he had a, a lot of people that still wasn't accepting uh, his complete ways. And he still had a lot of idol worshipers with him, you know, in order to please them, you know, and plus from the different signs in the heaven and dreams and visions and stuff that he was having, you know, he conformed himself unto sun worship, you know, and to appease those other men, you know, uh, that were with him, some other men that were with him as well, you know, to bring them on aboard to this whole Christianity thing. You know, so he was clearly cut as a, as a sun worshiper, man. And when you get into those, uh, the, the days itself, you know, our Hebrew customs, we numbered the days. The days were numbered. They weren't using 
these actual uh, name days because that all goes to uh, uh, pagan gods and pagan worship, you know. So that all comes from Constantine and it just got passed all the way down. And just real quick, um, I wanted to get into that. When you look up the word calendar here in um, the Bible dictionary, you know, brothers, you know, brothers all know about this. But this for, uh, you know, you people out there in Christianity, you know. So when you look up the word calendar, right, it says uh, calendar during the Bible period time was reckoned solely on astronomical observations. Days, months, and years were determined by the sun and the moon. Days of the week were not named by the Jews. So where do we get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all this from? Okay. From pagan worship, from these other heathens, all right? This is where we get those things from, all right? So it says, uh, days of the week were not named by the Jews, but were designated by ordinal numbers. The I'm just read it, you know how it says, but the Jewish day began in the evening with the appearance of the first stars. Days were subdivided into hours and watches, you know, um, the Hebrews divided nights into three watches. The seven-day week is of Semitic origin. Egyptians had a week of ten days. The Jewish week had its origin in the creation account and ran consecutively irrespective of lunar or solar cycles. This was done for man's physical and spiritual uh, welfare. Okay? So, and, and it also goes on to say... In another little point, it says the Hebrew month began with the new moon. So our days, okay, were by order of numbers, and our months began with the new moon. And uh, David also gave a reference uh, to that, you know. And this this is a, a, an example that proves that the days goes. Matter of fact, let me go to the essence of it. Let me go to the essence of it. Genesis one lets you know. Genesis 1 itself lets you know. That's prime example right there. You know, so even though, you know, we're in the so-called white man system, you know, we have to do things accordingly because we're not in rulership, but us worshiping the Lord and spirit and the truth and knowing how things are purposely to be, how things were proposed to go, you know, we observe things off of the new moon, off of the moon itself going by the days, you know, and we observe the high holy days, not the days uh, these holidays of this society, you know, so this is, uh, Genesis, uh, one and four and the, and the power saw the light that it was good. And the powers divided the light from the darkness and the powers called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. So that clearly shows you how the day is supposed to be. The evening, then the morning, right? Then another key example is when you go to the book of Psalms. Because what? When we typically wake up in the morning, what you wake up in the morning, what you supposed to do? You're supposed to pray. So in today's society, the day starts off in the morning. So you should be praying and stuff like that in the morning when you get up and at night when you're going to bed, according to the society, right? Now, this is David here. A Psalm of David, Psalms 55 and 16. It says, as for me, I will call upon the Most High, and the Lord shall save me. Now, check this. He said, evening. Why did he mention evening first? Evening, morning, and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Now, it was a custom of our people to pray three times a day. You can find that also in the account of uh, Daniel, I believe, uh, the sixth chapter in the 10th verse, which says, uh, Daniel prayed uh, three times, you know, I believe toward the east or facing his window, out of his window. You know, so that was a custom. But they clearly show you that the days start with the evening because that's why David said evening. Then after the evening, what comes? Then you have the morning and then at noon. And he clearly stated that to show you how the signs of the times went, you know. And also, as far as with the Sabbath, before I actually get into, you know, uh, that documentation, right? Um, the next example, real quick, 
is in uh the book of uh Samuel. Okay. One second. Stop getting my strap pages all thicker. Okay. Yeah, here we go. This is uh the book of uh first Samuel, chapter twenty. In uh, verse 18, straight to the point, it says, Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed because thy seat is empty. So, you know, in the heavens, you know, uh, the new you recognize the new moon, but you can't see the moon at all. You know, it doesn't seem to be present. It's just a, a dark sky. That's when the new moon comes in. That's how we can tell. Of course, we, you know, we number the days, we track the days, but when you hardly don't see no moon in the sky, that's how you know when the new moon is, you know? Um, and I jump to uh, verse 27 real quick and it says, And it came to pass on the morrow, which was the second day of the month. Okay, so he's, that's letting you know the new moon. Then he said what? this On the morrow, the second day of the month, which lets you know that the new moon determines uh, the first day of the month. And we read from the Bible dictionary. So it doesn't go how Esau just proclaims it, you know, and everything goes by the sun because that seems to be the the greater uh, light, you know, in general, you know, and according to their sun worship, that's what it's all for. That's what it's all for, you know. But um, going into uh, the next scripture real quick. This is the book of uh, Amos, chapter 8, verse 5. And it says, well, I, started, uh, I started at verse 4. Amos 8 and 4 says, Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land fail. Okay? Because it was referring to, you know, the ones that had uh, stock and were selling things, right? So ye that swallow up the needy, the people that was wicked, you know, that had money or ways to abuse the people by things in which they had, you know. It says, verse 5, saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by the seed. So why in this verse is... Uh, it equated, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat? Now, it's not separating those two. When it's saying and, you know, it's comparing them within the same uh, uh, text here. So it's, saying, it's equating the new moon with the Sabbath. So it's saying, when will the new moon be gone and the Sabbath because the new moon is a Sabbath? That's how it's supposed to be held. You know, we typically will have the feast day on every first uh, a day of the month, but it's still to be consecrated and held as a Sabbath day, a day of rest, you know, and just gathering with the brotherhood and, you know, going over the scriptures, going over the prayers to the Lord, you know. So I read that again. It says, saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? You know, because, you know, a, a wicked person to be waiting for the Sabbath to be over so they can do their own wicked pleasures or so they could just do pleasures in general. You know, that's why in Isaiah uh, 58, the Lord said, honor this, you're supposed to honor the Sabbath, you're supposed to enjoy the Sabbath, because that's the day dedicated unto the Lord, you're supposed to enjoy it, you know, but what a nigga do, you know, he'll be in his own spirit like this, just waiting for it to be over so that he can do what he want to do, all right, saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small, so they like, yeah, and, the, and the ephah, that's equated to you know, a, a, a bushel, you know, say for instance, you had a, a basket back then, you might have wheat, barley or something like that. They wanted the Sabbath to be over so they can make the ephah small, that portions that they had in that big bushel or whatever it is, they wanted to make it small. They wanted to sell it off so it won't be much left. And the shekel great. And so they wanted to get rid of their product and make their money prosper. That's what they were waiting for. That's what they were waiting for the Sabbath and the new moon to be over, you know, and falsifying the balances by the seat so they were cheating the people. This is the type of things that our people were doing, but I'm getting into all this just to show, you know, uh, you know, you people in the Christianity doctrine, you know, how uh, the days actually go. It's not according to the sun. It's according to the moon, you know, 
And like I said, that all goes back to Constantine himself. And this is another piece of documentation that I wanted to get into to show you how those in uh, uh, you know, the Christianity community actually feel and how they treat the Lord. You know, and I already read to you uh, Acts 5 and uh, 29, you know, that we ought to obey uh, man and not the Lord. Okay, it's locked in. Yeah, so this is a document here. Um, you know, but it's not going to be able to really read it like that. But I'll put this document up in um, the description box, uh, Lord willing, when I'm done. You know, if brothers can see the title of it, it's uh, Let There Be Light Ministries, Roman Catholic Confections about Saturday and Sunday. Now, this document does go off, but, you know, we know in the spirit that we got to uh, chew the meat and spit out the bones. You know, so I'm going to just get try to get straight to the point of this document, you know, to show you. How the uh, amongst the Christianity Christian community they feel as though that man can uh, purposefully, you know, change the Most High's laws, you know, and that and that also goes in into into Esau. That also goes into Esau. Uh, matter of fact, let me grab that real quick with uh, the Book of Daniel. Uh, this is the Book of uh, Daniel, um, seven and twenty-five, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. They thought to change times and laws. We don't actually know what exact gear we're in. You know, they changed, try to change the laws of the Most High. They base, you know, they claim that they base the laws of the society off the laws of the Bible, in which they take the statutes and the, and the formula, but they don't actually follow according to the laws of the Most High. They change everything up. That's why we have homosexuality, bestiality. Everything is opposite because this is Babylon, the land of confusion. You know, they changed the laws. They changed the ordinances. Instead of us celebrating the high holy days, which our people are supposed to know, you're celebrating Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, and also all other wickedness. All right. So, um, what was I at? They said, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. Okay. So I just wanted to uh, grab that real quick and then um, get into this uh, document. All right. And it says, uh, like I said, it's uh, Let There Be Light Ministries, Roman Catholic Confessions about uh, Saturday and Sunday. In this document, they believe that Saturday is the Sabbath. They don't have the full knowledge either, you know. <clears throat> about uh the sabbath but um like i said i'm gonna try to get straight to the point my other yeah <clears throat> part of my documentation off this one kind of ripped off but let me see yeah i'm gonna get straight to the point slocky 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 all right this is from one portion of the document where it says uh, Protestant Protestantism in discarding the authority of the Roman Catholic Church has no good reasons. It's telling you it has no good reasons for its Sunday theory and ought logically to keep Saturday as the Sabbath. Like I said, this document goes off. But, you know, we know that the Sabbath is not Saturday because as we already got into setting the foundation that. You know, uh, part of the Hebrew customs, we uh, numerologically, uh, you know, kept track of the days and the months, so on and so forth, not by the actual day names, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we go off for the moon, you know, which is approximately between uh, like 29, uh, 28 point something days, something to that effect, you know. OK, so uh, just reading that quick point and. Also, right here, I'll try to show this, hopefully, uh, where it says, uh, the authority of the church could therefore not be bound to the authority of the scriptures because the church had changed the Sabbath into Sunday, not by command of, it says, Christ, but by its own authority. And this is an excerpt from where it says, Canon and Tradition, page 233. So that's the documentation that Buzz can actually look up. Like I said, I'm going to put this in the description box so Buzz can have this documentation and, and go through it. You know, I just want to hit quick points on it. 
if any other brothers wanted to uh, tear this up, you know. And also it says um, it was the Catholic Church which had transferred this rest to Sunday in remembrance of the re resurrection of the Lord. They don't even know the whole meaning behind it because it goes back to Constantine, but it just shows you that that spirit carried on, you know what I'm saying? Therefore, the observance of Sunday by the Protestants is an homage to pay in spite of themselves to the authority of the Catholic Church. And it says, also you can see where I have in um, highlighting, it says, Sunday is our mark of authority. <laughs> it's their mark of authority, right? So this is a part of the image of the beast, you know, them uh, transferring the proper observance of the Saturday, of, uh, of the Sabbath, of the Lord's day of worship into uh, uh, paganism, you know, worshiping the sun, the sun god, whatever, whatever you want to call him, Beelzebub, Amin Ra, whatever. It says Sunday is our mark of or authority. The church is above the Bible. The church goes back to the word uh, e ecclesia, you know, which pretty much uh, gets into the, the people, a calling. You know what? It's a calling. It's a gathering of the men, you know. So it says the church is above the Bible. How can the men that are serving the Lord power of the Bible be above the Bible? What sense does that make? But this is what they believe in, in Christianity. By following this Sunday, by following Sundays as the Sabbath. And even though they follow the, the, the uh, uh, Sundays as a Sabbath, they still commit all manner of abominations, man. They defile their body with cigarettes, pork. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <clears throat> shrimp, lobster. All after the, all after Sunday service, you know, going up in the in the, in the IHOPs and the, the fast food joints and the restaurants and the, the dons, diners and all of that type stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that Sunday is our mark or authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. And it says, from the Catholic record of Lon London, Ontario, September 1st, 1923 and i'll hold this up so hopefully i don't know if brothers will be able to uh, actually see it if it be clear you can see where i have it highlighted um in the yellow there you know and like i said once again i'll put this documentation up um you know in the description box you know so this is clear this is clear going into what uh uh acts of uh, 5 and 29 you know it said what we ought to obey the most high rather than men but in the Christianity doctrines, they don't believe that. They don't believe that whatsoever. It clearly goes to show that by that documentation. But what us here, you know, with all the real men of the Lord at Great Millstone, we are studious. We study these things, man. So it's nothing to chop you Christians up, man. You so-called Christians up, man. All you people in the Christianity. Is, this is how uh, Apostle Zahar put up um, the clip of, uh, was it, um, damn, I can't think of the movie. A uh, white man can't jump, you know, Wesley Snipes and all that. You're like, this, this, this is too easy. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's easy, man. It's easy. This is child's play, man. You know, it's child's play. But, um, damn, what was I at? Slock you. Yeah, I'll grab that again. Um, Acts, yeah, Acts, uh, the fifth chapter again. <clears throat> you know, it just, everything just, just goes to show, man. You know what I'm saying? And y'all going to bear the punishment of y'all iniquities uh, for not looking and not studying, not researching, just believing what your pastor, your preacher tells you, man. You know? So I read this again. It's Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey the most high rather than men. So I ask you, uh, you know, uh, so-called Christians out there, who shall we obey? The most high or man? Should you observe the correct Sabbath according to the moon? According to uh, uh, the the new moons and and the, uh, the the weekly Sabbath, according to the moon, in a numerical order, how the Most High ordained it to be, or should you be following uh, the the Catholic Church's mark of authority and their sun worshiping on Sunday? Okay, what are you going to choose? You're going to obey the Most High. You're going to be obey men. What are you going to choose? All right. This is the book of uh, Romans. Slack you. The book of uh, Romans one. Book of Romans one and twenty-five. Who changed the truth 
of the Mosa into a lie. Who did that? Constantine, okay, all his other sun worshippers down the line, and the Catholic Church was a part of Christianity. Now, you know, you'll have some Christians will say, well, I'm Methodist, well, I'm Baptist. Well, you still follow Sunday, so you're still in error, you're still in the wrong, okay? You're still sun worshipping, okay? You're not serving the Lord in sincerity and truth. Who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever uh, to walk. Okay, so you worship in the creature, you know, of today more than the most high. Because you worship in man by keeping man's ordinances. And Yahweh Shah spoke of that. But before um, that, you know, I want to show that y'all want to bear the punishment of y'all iniquities, man. Going into the book of uh, Ezekiel. Okay. This is the book of uh, Ezekiel 14 and 10. It says, And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. Okay? And and right before, you know, uh, I came into the truth and I was dealing with the churches for a couple of weeks and I started learning about the truth and I learned about the Sabbath and all of that, you know, and I confronted them on this in like the, the new members class or whatever the case may be. And they gave me some bold answer, not a scriptural answer, but off the worldly wisdom answer said, if you believe that the sun died and rose on the third day, then you will believe in Sunday. But you don't hear, they didn't give no type of scriptural documentation, no type of scriptural spiritual facts. Okay. So for you not looking into this information and find out what the right information is and how to go about serving the Lord, what's the right days to serve the Lord, how to correctly keep the ordinances, the laws, the statutes, commandments, you're going to have to pay for that, man. Just ask them lying ass pastors and preachers that are teaching you out there, man. You know, are you a uh, uh, false apostles, a uh, uh, Gino? You know, are you false men in the Lord out there, man? You know, um, and Yahweh Shah also spoke about this. I'm going to grab... Uh, this last scripture, Lord willing, before I um, close out, damn, damn, this video will be kind of long. I mean, for it to go that long, but hey, man, it's the spirit, you know. <clears throat> All right, this is, uh, where did I want to go to? Where did I want to go to? Slap it. Let's put a mark. Yeah, what I have written down. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, so I, yeah, I was right. Yeah, Mark 7. Um, this is the book of uh, Mark 7. I start at uh, verse 1. It says, Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes who came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, with defiled yeah, eat bread with defiled, they that 